ma 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 sanama more love more power more love Come on, let's begin to thank him tonight in this place. Oh God, you are my Lord. You are my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what the power comes in Christianity is when we personalize this thing. That we're not thinking about somebody else's God. We're not praying to our parents' God. Amen. He's our Lord. He's our God. We saw this morning, amen, uh, that he is our God, amen, who gives us grace. Amen. His grace is my grace. It's sufficient for you. Not just the person next to you, for you tonight, church. He's your God tonight. Church, I mean, we need to celebrate that. We need to rejoice in that. The Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us tonight, amen. Thank him for his presence. Uh, we want to pray again as, as a church for Holloway. Uh, Stevenage tonight that the Lord will move. We want to pray for our loved ones uh, who are without the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray for Martin and Dion a while since we pray for them. Lift them up tonight to God would help them uh, to do and establish a great work uh, there in the Edgware area. Let's pray uh, for our mother church in Wolfham Forest for the British Fellowship uh, uh, conferences around the corner. Amen. We want to pray for all the churches. Uh, amen. That will be uh, uh, surely again obviously gathering at their buildings uh, and just, uh, just to try and get some form of atmosphere and fellowship and just a word from God and direction as individuals but also as a fellowship of churches uh, all around the British Isles I mean we want to trust God to help us uh, tonight amen uh, I need God you need God uh, come on let's lift our hands in this place we want to pray tonight uh, we want to come before him uh, come on make your request known I know tonight there are some requests in this place uh, make it known to God tonight uh, come on let's be real tonight no fake nonsense tonight uh, let's speak to our God uh, let's bear our hearts before him uh, let's trust him to move uh, and do accept exceedingly abundantly far above uh, we could ever ask uh, or think father tonight we trust in you god our confidence is in you father tonight we are thanking you god for all you're about to do in the midst of your church uh, Father, right now we pray, God, for the conference, God. Let it be a powerful time. God, let it be life-changing, God. Father, I pray, let us make a statement as a fellowship of churches. Father, Lord, not just in the nation of the United Kingdom, but the nations beyond God. Father, I pray tonight, help us, Father, to play our part in this last day's harvest. Father, right now we lift up our loved ones who are not saved, the fathers and mothers, 
brothers and sisters, cousins, uncles and aunties, Father, good friends that we Father's claim as family. We pray for them right now, God, to be converted. Father, tonight we pray for Tottenham. Pour out your spirit. Father, upon the community, but God, upon your church, we pray for those who may be sick in their bodies. Father, you would bring healing from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. God, tonight we speak victory and we pray you be glorified in this place. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Let's worship him tonight. Let's give our God a clap offering tonight. Shalom Ramamando Robo Sandaya. Amen. I want us to turn tonight to the book of Genesis. And tonight is a tricious, it's, it's a tricious scripture. Anytime we do a little bit of reading, I've, I've just called it Trisha. Trisha like reading, so <laughs> I'm sure she's going to appreciate this. Genesis, <laughs> Genesis, behave, whoever's giggling, which I know who you are. Genesis, <laughs> Genesis 44, verse 1 to verse 17. Is that, is that good, Trisha? 17 verses, good? All right. <laughs> Genesis 44, 1 to 17. There are nations and cities around the world that are sitting on something called a tectonic uh, plate. It is, they dubbed it the ring of fire. Nations like Japan, but also in the United States, California. And what it means that they are sitting on techno tectonic plates is these places are earthquake prone. Most earthquakes are uh, register five, six, seven uh, on the magnitude. This is the strength for the Richter scale to, to measure the strength and the destruction uh, of, the, the, of the earthquakes. But many experts say there is a big one to come. And the big one is hypothetically an earthquake magnitude of an eight or even greater. The big one. They said the same is true with, with heart attacks, that those who have suffered heart attacks and survived them in the back of their mind is the big one. I remember when I was growing up, I uh, used to watch a program. I don't know the only person possibly that may, may, I could be wrong here. Yeah, I probably could agree. It, 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 it's Carl. Uh, and there was a program called Stanford and Sons. Do, do, you know about, do you know about it, Carl? There you go. Carl's my guy here. He knows. And, and Stanford and Son is about a father and a son, and, 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 and I can't remember who is who. Uh, yeah, Stanford, by the way. Yeah. And Stanford is an older guy. His son is there. And, and Stanford, from time to time, he begins to pretend he's having a heart attack. And he goes, oh, oh, here he comes. Oh, 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 I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. And his son tells him what he wants to hear or does what he wants to do, and all of a sudden he's healed. But one day the big one came. And there's no healing from that. In 2004, 2005, UEFA Champions League. The competition was won by the best team in the whole universe, Liverpool. Who beat AC Milan on penalties. They had literally come back from being 3-0 down at halftime. And they won. They were able to equalize 3-all. Uh, 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 and they won the competition uh, in penalties. You can say tonight that that game was the big one. Tonight I want to preach a sermon I've called the big one. And I want God today to speak to us about the big one. Let's read Genesis 44, verse 1 to verse 17. A treasure verse. Sis. Right, here we go. And he commanded the stewards in his house, saying, Fill the men's sack with food, as much as they carry, as much as they can carry. And put each man's money in the mouth of his uh, sack. Also put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest and his grain money. So he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning dawned, the men were away and they and their donkey. When they had gone out of the city and were not yet far off, Joseph said to his servant, get up. Follow the men, and when you overtake them, overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? Is not this one of which my Lord drinks, and with which he indeed practices divination? You have done evil in so doing. So he overtook them, and he spoke to them these same words. And they said to him, Why does my Lord say these words? 
Far be it from us that your servants would do such a thing. Look, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money which we found uh, in the mouth of our sacks. Uh, how then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? And with, with whomever of, of your servants it is found, let him die. And we also will be uh, uh, my Lord's slaves. Then he said, now also let it be according to your words. He with whom it is found shall be my slave and you shall be blameless. And each man speedily let down his sack to the ground and each opened his sack. And he searched and began with the oldest and left up of the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes. Each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city. So Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was there, and they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said to them, What deed is this you have done? Did you not know that such a man as I can certainly practice divination? Then Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants here. We are my Lord's slave, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. But he said, far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my slaves. And you, as, as for you, go up in peace to your father. Father, tonight we are so grateful for this time. Uh, today we are asking God once more to learn of you, to grow in you. And Father, to be the men and women you created and called us to be. Father, we need your wisdom in our lives. Father, not our own. Help us tonight, God, so we may grow and be all you've called us to be, Lord. We need you desperately right now. I pray tonight you will open the eyes of your servants. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' wonderful name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Before we look at the big one. We want to first of all consider the big question. In John chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, the Bible says, Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, seeing a great multitude coming towards him. He said to Philip, who is here with us tonight, Where shall we buy bread that, that, that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. How many of you know God is always up to something tonight? God is never stagnant, God is never slow, God is never just uh, stable tonight or, or just, uh, just, uh, just doing nothing tonight. He's always up to something. And in our text we just read uh, in John, Jesus poses a ridiculous and silly question to Philip. He says, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? This is the famous feeding of the 5,000. And many Bible scholars believe that there were probably up to 50,000 people present, uh, sitting down. This is women, this is men, this is children. There was probably up to 50,000 people present. Uh, and the Bible tells us tonight that Jesus turns to Philip uh, and says, listen, we need to feed them. What should we do? Uh, and Philip is all kind of perplexed. He doesn't know what. He's like looking at Jesus. What are you talking about? Can you see how many uh, people uh, are here? How is it possible? In one translation, um, or sorry, in one uh, 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 um, a gospel, uh, Philip basically says, listen, if we have six month, months wages, there is no way that we can feed these people. If you do a study as well, there were no markets or places where you can buy food for miles. But the Bible tells us that Jesus said this to test him. The word test in the Greek is the word pirazo, and it means to test to see what is the quality of something tonight. The Bible tells us our Lord Jesus, amen, had turned water into wine, and the disciples have seen this. Our Lord Jesus had brought the dead to life, and the disciples have seen this. Our Lord Jesus had walked upon water, and the disciples have seen this. In fact, you can say tonight that these men lived in an atmosphere of miracles. They were with Jesus 21 24 7 tonight and if anyone should have rushed forward and said listen I don't know how all this is gonna work out but Lord I trust you Lord I believe you it should have been the disciples tonight and the Bible says he spoke something and he spoke it to Philip already knowing what he was going to do tonight you may think tonight that you have great faith 
Tonight you may think tonight you have a great level of faith tonight, that your faith is strong. That is until Jesus tells you to do something that is outside of your comfort zone. I remember uh, there was a, a while back, uh, I, I began to step out uh, and, and, and pray uh, for people uh, and believe God to bring healing. And, and God, you know, would touch people and heal their back and take away their headaches, etc. and so forth. Uh, that was until one day that Jesus brought a woman uh, into the church in a, in a wheelchair. And I'm praying for everybody and like kind of skip her. It's like, I believe you for your headache. I believe you for your back. I believe you for a job. But you, that's, the, that's way over my pay grade. I can't do that. And that Jesus basically exposed me to show me that my faith was not as strong and it was not as confident in him as I thought that it was tonight. Listen to me tonight. Amen. The Bible is filled with all this account. Amen. That Jesus is able to show us the, the deficiency tonight, you could say, of our faith. So what is the big question tonight is this. Is Jesus testing you? How many people here are part of the people of God? Lift your hand up. You're part of the people of God. So here it is tonight. In the Bible, you see God testing people. His people. Not the lost. Not society. The people of God. The Bible says he tested Abraham in Genesis chapter 21 verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. The Bible says he tested Israel. Exodus chapter 15 verse 25. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them. The Bible says he tested Job in Job 23 10. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I should come forth as gold. Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 3 uh, verse 10 to verse 11. But let these also first be tested and let them serve as deacons being found blameless. One of the central truths of the word of God is that God is testing his people. I'm not talking about sinners. I'm talking about saints tonight. And and he often does, does so when you and I are completely unaware that this is what is taking place. Tonight, amen, you and I, amen, are walking in a test. So let me ask you a question tonight again. Is Jesus testing you? So look at the testing truths. Now I believe tonight and I hope that we all know tonight that we're going to be tested. Some of you right now you are in a test. And you're completely unaware that is what's taking place. In fact, it is the very fabric of life that there is a test that comes to us. Tonight we took an offering. And we all know Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. He says, and try me now in this. And says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the, uh, for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be enough room enough to receive it. That word try is the word test. And many people fail to see that he's testing you here to see if you will test him. That the offering is a test. That God is testing his people. You know the account of Jacob and sorry Joseph and his brothers and his father Jacob tonight. It is a powerful uh, 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 account in the Word of God, and it's a real life true account. Joseph has been sold to be a slave. He's been uh, in the house of Potiphar and into prison for something he didn't do, and finally he's, he's vindicated. He becomes the second most powerful man in the world. Life is going fantastic. That is until his brothers show up. And he's shocked. He sees them. And they have no idea that who they're standing before is their brothers. Years has passed. Uh, he was a teenager before. He's now a man. Uh, he's cleanly shaved. He looks like an Egyptian. They have no idea this is our brother, uh, 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 Joseph. And when we look at the sons of Jacob tonight, the sons of Jacob have been tested by their brother Joseph. Joseph is a type of Christ. And from, testing, from the testing of his brothers tonight, we see something of God's testing of us. Listen, everything Joseph did to his brothers was deliberate. 
it was very, very, very targeted tonight. He spoke rough to them. He, he, he held Simeon, the youngest that hostage, you can say. He demanded, uh, sorry, the, the, sorry the, 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 one of the brothers, Simeon, hostage. He, and he demanded that the youngest brother, uh, Benjamin, be brought uh, back to him. Everything he did uh, was very, very deliberate tonight. Now, why did he do this tonight? Listen to me very carefully. Because it was all necessary. This was not something we can just dismiss. It was extremely necessary. Sometimes we ask a question, what is God trying to do when he allows his people, his children, to go through hard trials and deep suffering? And there are many, many answers to that question. First of all, tonight, I confirm tonight, God wants to purge us from our sins and purify us to be the men and women he's called us to be. Do you know that sometimes I hope I'm talking to some real people tonight. Sometimes we sin. God has to purge us. God has to cleanse us. God has to begin to go to work to, to purify us from our iniquities. Second of all tonight, God uses suffering to test our faith. I know we can all walk in the light. But when we trust God in the darkness, we can praise God when things are good. But like we saw this morning, can we praise God when things are difficult and hard? Will you serve God when things are not going your way? Will you hold on to the truth of the word of God when you feel like giving up? It's amazing the amount of God's people in time time we feel like giving up. Are we still going to hold on to the truth when we feel like it tonight? From time to time, you're going to feel like throwing in the towel. You're going to feel like just flushing all of this down the toilet. You know, I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. I'm, that's it. You're going to feel like it, but are you going to believe God? Thirdly tonight, God uses times of difficulties to humble us. We saw it this morning, church. We don't need God when we're doing well. We, 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 when we're strong, God can sit in the back seat. God can be the passenger. We're driving the car. Fourthly tonight, God uses hard times to prepare us to minister to others. You see, he comforts us so we can in turn comfort others. Listen, I know many, many Christians tonight whose greatest ministry has come from sharing with others the help they receive from God so they can be helped. Some of you know Pastor Scott Lamb and Pastor Alti Aragon. These two men have actually lost their children before. Children have died. But they've taken on the ministry upon themselves in the United States. Anytime they hear about a pastor or a pastor or couple who loses a child, they get on the plane, they fly over, and they minister to them. No one's told them to do this. They've personally decided, you know, I'm gonna, I know what I know what they're going through. I know the pain. I know the separation. I know the hurt. I know the condemnation. I know, I know, I know. And because I know and God has helped me, I'm gonna help them with the same help and God has helped me with. Number five, I believe God uses hard times to prepare us for new understandings of his character. Listen, it's in the furnace that we discover the goodness of God, not the palace. It's in the hard times we see how faithful and how good God is tonight. And tonight, until your faith is put to the test, it's going to be just like evolution. It's a theory. That's all it is. It's, it's something that you, you think, but you actually do not know. Listen tonight, you never know what you believe until hard time comes. Then you're going to find out. That for better or for worse tonight, you're going to find out tonight. Think about it, when the phone rings tonight and you get some bad news. When your child ends up in, 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 in hospital fighting for their life or even, or even prison. When, when you're, you're betrayed by a loved one or, God forbid, your parents die suddenly. Then you really begin to find out what's inside of you. 
then you really begin to find out if your help truly comes from the Lord. When your life begins to fall apart, you discover you, who you really are, truly and actually tonight, in the depths of your soul. And until that happens tonight, you're simply just speculating, you're simply just uh, throwing out a hypothesis, uh, you're just simply just, uh, just talking uh, about your faith because it never really has been tested. Tonight, our text, we find the, 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 uh, the brothers of Joseph. And they teach us tonight that we are going to be tested. It is necessary tonight. And notice tonight, God is doing something in the testing. Now, I've said all of that to say this. All the tests that we are going through, please listen to me tonight. All the tests that we are dealing with is leading to the big one. So we're going to be tested. But every test you are dealing with right now, and I'm dealing with, is all leading to the big one. All the mock exams you do in year, was it, 11? Is getting you ready for the real GCSEs. All the, 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 the you know, the, the, in, in, in football, when you go through the group stages, it's all leading towards the final. Church, we're headed somewhere. I said we're headed somewhere, folks. Really, we are. So I want to look tonight at three testing truths that is so important we grasp this tonight. Three testing truths. Because the people here, some of you are in the test. Some of you are going to about to enter a test. Some of you finished a test, you had no idea you've been tested. So there's three truths we need to understand. Number one tonight, how you do in the small will determine how you do in the big. How you do in the small will determine how you do in the big. It doesn't, has never happened here. But in South Africa, there was a, they, every year they have what they call metric exams. Metric, I guess, is the equivalent of GCSEs. And during the metric exams, all of a sudden, all these young people were flooding the church more than ever before. People I, I've never met, but they're all young. They all come in here and they have their school uniform on. And they sit down in service, they hear preaching, etc. and so forth. After the service, they literally come and surround me. And guess what they want me to do? They want me to pray for them. Pastor, or the same Fundisi, can you pray for us? And I always ask him the same questions. And I say this, I've got no problem praying for you. I just want to ask you one question. Have you studied? And if they tell me no, I do this. Okay, next one. Have you studied? Yes, Fundis. Okay, let's pray. Listen to me tonight, very, very carefully tonight, church. When it comes to test, the temptation is to neglect the small. Studying, revising, reading the small. The temptation is just to cast it aside because we see it as small. We see it as something that is insignificant tonight. You think tonight, how, how does this relate to us in the spiritual tonight? Listen to me tonight. The small things tonight Many times we think are not a big deal. The small things tonight are things we think or we don't see as a big deal. That it's not a big deal for me to pray. It's not a big deal for me to come to church. It's not a big deal for me to talk to pastor today. It's not a big deal. You know what? It can wait. It's not a big deal for me to pay that person back that money I borrowed from them. It's not a big deal for me. You know what? Uh, uh, if, if I'm late, I'm late. It's not a big deal. Let me make a statement tonight. I'm going to make a couple of statements tonight. The legacy we leave tomorrow is the legacy we're building today. It's not a big deal. It's not important. It's a minor. It's nothing. Tonight, what don't you think is a big deal? Jesus puts it this way in Luke chapter 16, verse 10. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in what is much. 
Listen to what it says again in Luke chapter 19, verse 17. And he said to him, well done, good and faithful servant, because you were faithful over a very little. Have authorities over ten cities. Listen to me, the small says a lot about how you view the big. I mean, how we just dismiss things. We think it's not, what's the big, what, why, what, 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 we just see it's unimportant and irrelevant. What are, you, what are you going on about? Why, why? So you have no idea tonight. The small really paints a picture how you view the big things. To the small one is there to prepare you for the big one. Here's our brothers tonight. And our brothers tonight, they responded right to Joseph. They had brought back Benjamin like uh, he requested. And they're happy, uh, 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 you know, for him, etc. The money has been returned uh, in the sacks. Uh, I mean, everything uh, has been done. Uh, I mean, right tonight. Uh, tonight, church, listen to me. If you don't do well in the small, you're not going to do well in the big. It's that simple tonight. And if you don't do well in the small tonight, you may not even get to the big. If you dismiss small things, you think this is irrelevant, it's nothing, why am I, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Some people here tonight, you have no idea you've been tested. And your response and your attitude tonight is exposing you. Number two tonight, if you fail in the big, you lose all the credit of the small. There are people tonight who have done well so, so far, but they mess up when it really matters. In 2010, The World Cup came to Africa. And many people's, many people's mind, they thought an African nation was finally going to actually win the World Cup. You know, Europe has won it and uh, 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 South America, these nations have won it, but when is Africa's time? So we went to see a couple of games and uh, watched a couple of games, etc. But I didn't get to see this game I actually, well, I can't, I can't remember, we were on our way somewhere, and we actually stopped by a petrol station. We sat down and watched it there. <laughs> and um, it was the game between Ghana, it is said, and, 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 I mean, saying, is that all you can say? Uh, um, <laughs> Ghana and Uruguay. This massive game, and every, everyone, everyone is cheering Africa. This is the final African team uh, uh, representing Africa uh, in the World Cup. Everyone is cheering Ghana. Everyone's, come on, guys, you can do it, etc. and so forth. And, you know, we're there in the petrol station. All those people are there. We're just sitting there. Our bus is open van. We're sitting there. You go, rah, 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 and we're cheering um, uh, 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 Ghana. And uh, it came down to a penalty by a player called uh, Asoma Gayen. And if you know uh, uh, the, what happened... Asuma Gayen was one of the star players in Ghana. He had, done, he, had, he had played tremendously throughout the tournament, but it came down to this penalty. And he missed the penalty. And Ghana were eliminated from the World Cup. Listen to me tonight, church. It did not matter everything he had achieved before. It didn't matter all the help and all the running and all the passing and all the blocking and all the everything. It didn't matter all the training. You could say that I'd gone on before, everything had done before. You can say tonight uh, that the big canceled out all the achievements of the small. That when he needed the most to show up and do something tonight, you could say he failed. Biblically tonight, we can talk about the rich young ruler. Here is a young man that kept all the commandments of, uh, of God, he, so he says tonight. Um, here is a young man who has done right thus far tonight, but he messes up when it really mattered. And you could say all his past achievements were wasted. This is tonight. It doesn't matter if you had 10 years of faithful marriage. One act of before. 
One act of insanity could just mash up the whole dance. Let me make another statement tonight. Beware of the traps of overconfidence. That we can get so overconfident, so full of ourselves tonight. So, so, so you know what? You know, I'm good. Here are these young men, or older men, should I say, they've gone to Egypt, uh, and you can see the trip had been a, a, a great success. Uh, they've gone back, and uh, uh, the, here is G just, here's, here's the um, uh, Benjamin, like we said, he's real, he's here. Uh, could you let Simeon go? Simeon is let go. Uh, they sat down, they're fed, uh, they're given grains of food, everything went well. Uh, 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 money has been given to them. Um, they've been blessed, it's been a great success. Uh, they leave Egypt in victory. They've had a feast. They've, they've been blessed uh, in the presence uh, of Joseph. They've had favor with the governor Joseph tonight. They've had a good night's sleep. They've secured the release of, si of Simeon. They've had Benjamin and it couldn't get any better than this. But look what they said in verse 6 to verse 9. So he overtook them and he spoke to these men, same words. And they said to him, why does my Lord say these words? Five be from us that your servants should do such a thing. Look, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money which we found in the mouth of our sacks. How could we steal, sorry, yeah. How could we steal silver and gold from your Lord's house with whom, now listen to this, with whomever of your servants is found, let him die, and he also will be our Lord's slave. Kai. This man catches up with them. What have you guys done? What do you mean we were done? What, what, you, 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 the, 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 our Lord says you've took in his cup. This is how he practices his divination. Listen, we ain't done nothing at all. What are you talking about? Listen, we're so confident. We're so confident we've done nothing wrong. Search all of us. And we, we, if you find it in any of our bags, not only will we become our slaves. You know what? Let's top it up here. In the, whoever's bag you find upon, that person needs to die. Ouch. Because the cup was found in Benjamin's bag. The cup was found in their father's favorite's bag. You know what? Awful confidence will make you go too far. People say, well, I've got it under control. I can handle it. Really. Awful confidence is just another form of pride. Nothing more, nothing less. We're so confident that we, yep, I know, yep, I'm, yep. Yeah, you don't understand. Yeah, you don't understand. I understand. Yep. Yeah. Listen, shut up. I know what I'm doing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And we end up paying the price down the road. Lastly, tonight, you're going to have to contend with where you failed in the past. Now, all tests are important tonight. But listen to me tonight. There are some tests that are much more important than others. All tests are important. But there are some that are much more weightier. Doesn't mean you ignore that one tonight. But understand that this one is vital. This one is big. The Bible says they leave. And not too far in the journey, they, they begin to hear horses behind them. And I think tonight it's probably like that sinking feeling when you're driving your car and you look in your rearview mirror and see the blue flashing lights. And it doesn't matter whether you're innocent or not tonight, you think to yourself, are they following me? <laughs> Happened to me today, driving back home from church, flashing lights, I thought... I ain't driving fast and I'm keeping with the speed limit and blah, blah, blah. And I turn my, I said, all right, let me just turn my road. And if they follow me down the road, like, well, I turn, I just went past me and I said, hey, praise God. You know, like. <laughs> so here's this, they hearing these horses coming behind them. And their mind, they're probably thinking, what's going on? You know, is everything okay, et cetera, and so forth. I, you know, in their mind, so many, so many things are, are, are working their head. And in verse 8, The Bible says this, look, 
We brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money which we found in the mouths of Asak. How then could we steal silver and gold from your Lord's house? Have you ever been accused of something you did not do? It's not a nice feeling. You know you're innocent. You know your hands are clean. But you're being accused of something you did not do tonight. And they had done absolutely nothing wrong. And they were being falsely accused. They were being falsely arrested. You could say for something they didn't do. But it was a test. Because it was all leading to the big one. I want to close quick look like you never know. There is a song by C.C. Wyman. Who's ever heard about the Wymans? And the song says, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it. I can imagine Trisha singing the song. I don't know why. Maybe she knows it. Trisha, you know the song? You don't know it. Don't listen to it, Trisha. <laughs> Trisha, watch your mom. Don't let her download that song. Otherwise, you ain't going to sleep at night. All right. It's called, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it. And the song, if you listen to the lyrics, is basically depicting what Jesus Christ went through. And you can say tonight, all the church goes through tonight. And we are going to go through it tonight. And the whole message of the song is about the cross. And here's the message of the cross tonight. It wasn't easy. But it was worth it tonight. This is authentic Christianity in a nutshell. That you're going to go through stuff that is not going to be easy. But in the end, you're going to see it was worth it. Stuff that is challenging. But in the end, you're going to understand it was worth it. Our brothers tonight had been through so much. Joseph has been through so much. Jacob, their father, had been through so much. Think about it. Even the world at that time, remember, the whole world is in famine. The whole world had been through a time that was so much. Some of you tonight, amen, have been through so much. But can I declare to you tonight that it may not be easy, but in the end, it's going to be worth it tonight. There's some people who are still thinking tonight, then, preacher, what, 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 is, what is the point of all of this tonight? What's all this about? Here it is tonight. This whole big one, because some people still don't get it. I was reading about a man. His name is Billy Ray Harris. He's 55 years old. He's homeless. And he lived on the street corner in Kansas City. And uh, he was holding out a cup or asking passerbys for any change, any loose change, etc. and so forth. And um, he'd been doing this for a long, long time. And the story goes, the woman put some uh, money uh, into his cup. He's begging for money. She put some money into his cup. But she didn't just put money. She accidentally put, her, put in, I think it fell out, her wedding ring. Her wedding ring falls into this cup. And Billy, Ray, uh, Billy Ray Harris sorry, sees this. And he considered selling this ring. And he actually went to the point where he took the ring to a pawn shop to have it appraised. And the ring was worth 4000 American dollars. That's a lot of... Ooh, that's a lot of... You know what I'm saying? That would that, 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 that do me nice right there. Four Gs. Right? He appraised it. And he thought about selling it. But ultimately, he couldn't go through with it. After a few days, he, re he returned the ring to the owner. Her name uh, 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 was um, uh, Sarah Darling, for the name. He returned this ring back to this owner, Sarah Darling. And listen to what this man says. He said, I'm not trying to say that I'm no, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I'm, I'm no saint, but I ain't no devil either. That's what he said. I'm not trying to say I'm a saint. But I'm not devil. I can't sell a woman's wedding ring. As way of to say thank you, this woman, Sarah Darling, her husband, they started a 
the, a fund to raise money to help Harris to basically get his life back on track. Uh, and they said these words, we set a goal for $1,000. That was the goal. Let's get $1,000. Let's get a fund together. Let's get $1,000. Let's bless this guy. And uh, the news went out all around about what this man did. The, the ring fell in the cup. He, he found it and he went to look for this woman and he gave her back. Here's your ring that is worth $4,000. And they went on to say this. They said, we set it up because a lot of people who had been touched by the story expressed interest in helping Billy Ray. The fund raised far much more than they expected. In just three months, in just three months, people had donated $190,000. Maybe I need to go on the street and start begging. <laughs> this is true. $190,000, here it is, and growing. And counting is this as people are giving more and more and more and more money for well, Harris he spoke to a lawyer who would help him put the money in the trust and since then he's been able to buy a car he even put down money for a house which is actually fixing up the house himself and that's not all he appeared on uh, the national television his family members who had not been able to find him for 16 years had heard rumors that he had dead, but they were able to track him down and they were simply happy to see him and being reunited with Harris. And sometimes I know people's mind, they think that, yes, they hey, the man's got money, let's go. But that was not the case here. They, was, they were really were looking for this man and they were just simply happy that, it, it, that he, was, he was alive and uh, obviously he was well uh, and they were able to be uh, reunited with him and now they begin they're, they're now working on their relationship with him including nieces and nephews he didn't even know existed and listen to what he said he said when i think of the past i think thank god that is over he says i mean i feel human now how many know tonight that was a test and that was not just a test. Listen to me tonight. That was a big one. Here it is tonight, church. You never know when you are one final test from our happily ever after. We don't know. We have no idea. In chapter 45, you read it your own time, you could say a big reveal takes place. Joseph reveals to his brothers that he's Joseph. It is a very emotional, if one of the most emotional, if not the most emotional scene in all the word of God tonight. Here is a dysfunctional family that is healed. Here is a dysfunctional family that the father, amen, is healed. Everyone is forgiven. Our people are blessed. Destiny, amen, is entered into tonight. Listen to me tonight, church. You need to live life not paranoid, but sometimes you need to ask yourself a question. Whatever I'm going through, is this a test? And if this is a test, is this the big one? Because sometimes we just get vexed about this, we get twisted about this, we get emotional about this, and you have no idea you're being tested. You have no idea. And I guess that's one of the points of being tested, because it's good that you don't know, because it reveals what's in you. It reveals your character, your heart, your attitude, what's really at work in you. The big one, folks. The big one. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.